Okay, good. There, there he is. Hello, Amber. Hi. Let me introduce Phil to Amber. Amber is a very new student, so this will be a, her first crack at being the interviewer in one of these things. So. Oh, exciting. So uh, I suspect she won't have too much to say, but maybe she will. We'll, we'll, we'll see about that. She's a free agent in that regard. And uh, Phil is a writer. Sure. Neuro, yeah. Neuroscience writer. Really out there. Yeah. I used to do research in psychology. So it will be interesting to see what, what, what we find out there. And uh, Phil sent me uh some notes about the beeps that he has collected, and these beeps came from today. Is that right? Your yesterday? Um, some of them, uh, four are from yesterday, and three are, or two are from today. Okay. And I didn't, I did not look at the, at those notes, and the, okay. and the reason for that is, the the aim of DES is always to get at, in this case, Phil's experience, and I'm. And I'm worried about things like words standing in the way of that. So if 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 you write the words in such a way, then I get I could get captured by those words, uh -huh. and and, uh, and so what I, I I'm pretty sure that words have sort of an elastic meaning or a sort of a variable meaning, mm -hmm. and I would like that meaning that meaning to emerge. And so in the conversation that we have, we're going to go back and forth about what what a particular word might mean. And the longer we spend in that conversation, the better I'm going to like it because mm -hmm. I, I want to make sure I got the words right. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to do anything to, sh to sh short circuit that. Okay. I'm, I, well, there might very well be different ways to do it, but that's the, that's the way I have. Uh, that makes sense to me. And uh, so, I've, so it's a, the, the whole notion of words is an interesting thing because obviously DES is entirely about words. We're, we're mm -hmm. going to communicate in words. We're not going to communicate so much in gestures, although that's part of it and whatever. But, but mostly it's about words. And yet I am I am pretty convinced that the words themselves don't matter. That we're, we're, going to, we're going to use words as tools to point at Phil's experience. And, uh, and we're going to recognize that those words are ambiguous and and we're going to try to we're going to try to do the best we can given the tools we've got, which are limited. But. Mm -hmm. So, is there anything else that we should be talking about before we take a look at some? Beeps? I don't think so. I just wanted to say thanks for um, postponing the meeting until today. No problem. Yeah, it was um, it's it was Constitution Day here in Norway yesterday. And um, it was the first time in a couple of years because of the pandemic. Um, now things are back to normal and it, there were some festivities going on downtown. And um, uh, my fiance and I really wanted to go. Um, <clears throat> and I thought it would be kind of interesting to be collecting um, experiences in that context instead of coming home and, and doing this interview. So. I thought, well, maybe if we can reschedule it for today, I can, I can um, wear the beeper downtown in the middle of the, all the festivities that were happening, and uh, and that's what I did. Oh, cool. I'll, I'll look forward to that. And and do the festivities get changed by the by the impending NATO deal? What, what's is that oh, fil filtered no, down? No, I didn't. I didn't. Haven't read anything connecting Constitution Day and, and NATO. So I don't think so. Is, is NATO a big discussion in Norway among the, among the people? Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, but I haven't, to be honest, in the past week or so, I haven't been paying much attention. So, so I, don't, I don't have too much more to say about that. Yeah. But I do have to tell you that um, I guess maybe it was a month and a half ago um, we took a we took a ferry for a few hours to another town that's south of here. Pretty much everything is south of here. Um, and on the way, we saw maybe five or six different military ships just stationed at different points, different strategic points along the way, which was uh, which was quite interesting. We had never seen never seen anything like that before.
Ru Russian military ships? No, no, um, NATO, NATO military ships. Huh. Yeah. So there's, yeah. And then there's some big, there's been, there's been some ongoing military exercise here. Right. There's, um, a big, there's a big NATO military exercise that maybe is in, at least in part in Norway. I'm not exactly. Yeah. Well, there, it's been in the newspapers. Um, <clears throat> they let, there, there are many Americans on the streets because they're they're stationed here, or they're uh, maybe I haven't seen a ship, but I imagine there's a ship around somewhere. And um, the newspapers like to ask the Americans questions about what they think of Tromsø and what they think of Norway, and uh, and um, and yeah, I I hear them. Over the pandemic, I hardly heard any not anybody speaking English without an accent. Um, yeah, or well, to me, Americans same sound pretty much the same as Canadians. But uh, now I hear now I do hear all sorts of Americans around town. So it's it's kind of interesting. Well, the world is a different place now than it was a year ago, for sure. Yeah, in a yeah. variety of different perspectives. Yeah. Well, I would but, say let's, yeah, let's, let's okay. take a look at beeps. And, uh, yeah. So beep number one. Um, <clears throat> I'm just going to read my, my note. Um, I was sitting on my sofa using my computer. I was looking at a web page for booking a cabin that we were interested in booking. And the moment prior to the beep, I was about to place my finger on the screen to, I have a, a haptic screen, um, to scroll the page to get to a portion that contained a map. So I was looking at my finger, which appeared silhouetted, silhouetted against the bright white space on a mostly blank part of the web page. And without words, I had a feeling of appreciation of how easy and fast I could get to the map at the top of the web page because there was so much open space that I could use to freely scroll upwards without having to worry about accidentally pressing on a link. Okay, so there's a lot of things that there 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 were or might have been or whatever in your experience. So the so starting from the from the beginning, there was the finger, the dark finger against the white background. Is that yeah, yeah? And and is that directly in your experience, or is that a fact of the universe? And the different the difference that I would the distinction that I would make there is if if uh, if this is time like this time at time is marching in like this and the beep happens here and so the beep beeps and you push the button and the beep stops and time continues marching off marching like that yeah if the moment that we're interested in here is right one microsecond before the beep the question is is the is the silhouettiness of this of your finger a present in your direct experience or um, is that just well, it is a fact that my finger is silhouetted against it. And then and then I respond to the beep. When I respond to the beep, I can look back and say, oh, look, my finger is really bright against the dark against the back, right? Back yeah, back. I think it was part of my experience. I was, I was looking at my finger and I was sort of taking in, for lack of a better word, how it was dark against the white background and how I could just, like, just freely scroll the page so so this aspect of your experience is about phil's finger not about the the cabin or whatever right yeah so i'm i'm noting my i'm noting the visual characteristics of my finger at the moment of the beep that's i would say that's correct okay. and i was also um because i was scrolling at the time i was also appreciating how easy it was to scroll this page because it was it had so much blank empty space and so that's sort of two separate sounds like themes of experience is that right that there's the i, I think the, so I, the yeah. visual and the satisfaction appreciation yeah yep. okay and are those equal equally powerful present 
as far as your experience is concerned? Or does that question I, make I sense? think so. I think so. I, uh, I was scrolling along. I noticed how my finger looked dark against the background and, and how easy it was to just maybe one, two, three times to get to the top of the page to where that map was that I wanted to click on. So let me see whether I've got, or let me tell you what I've got. You tell me whether this is this is right. I'm I'm looking for a cabin, but the cabinness is not in my experience, and the vacation is not in my experience, and the plan is not in my experience right now. That's obviously the task I'm engaged in. Right. I, the the web page I was looking at, like I had already found the cabin, and I was on an information page about that specific cabin and I wanted to um, I wanted to take another look at where it was exactly so I had gone down to the bottom of the page and then at the top of the page there was a map and I just wanted to get back to that back to that map but I gather that's the, the task that you sort of set for yourself but in your experience right at the moment of the beep that task is not present it's not like it's not like the map is present to me what's present to me is the black against white of my finger yeah. and yeah. convenience of the page or the satisfaction. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And is there more to say about how the, the appreciation, what, 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 I think that was mm. the appreciation. I wasn't, um, I wasn't using any words at the moment. Um, I just, I just, I, I, felt the ease with which I could scroll the, the page. Okay. Yeah. I, I think, yeah, this one is not, maybe not the most exciting. <laughs> well, I would say it's the first one and they're all, they're all, all exciting. So I think, we've, <laughs> I think we've done a pretty good job for number one. Amber, you, you, you have questions that you'd like to ask about that? Um, yeah, I wanted to ask, is there any sensory aspect of this? Like, do you feel the touching of the screen? Do you feel hmm. part of your appreciation? Well, I guess um, there is maybe a, a bit of a timing issue here because at the moment right before the beep, I don't know if I was actually contacting the screen if I, I don't know if I was touching the screen at that moment or not, um, but I wasn't taking in any tactile aspect of the experience. It was more the, the visual aspect of my, that my finger looked really dark against this bright white background as I was easily scrolling the page. So let me, let me make a little comment on that question, and, and, and that is, it, it is not the case that we want to do a catalog of all possible experiences. So it's quite possible that your finger was or was not touching the screen and you, and you may or may not have been feeling that tactileness. Like, for example, right now you're sitting on the chair, I presume, and, and mm -hmm. you've got tactile experiences of, of, from your backside or whatever. And I'm mm -hmm. guessing you haven't been paying attention to that for the last few minutes and it's been there right. it's, yeah. it's been there but not part of your direct experience and and you've been responding to that in some in some skillful way you're not falling off your chair or whatever and mm -hmm. uh, uh, but that does not mean it's in your experience so uh, so we don't want to imply that that just because you're touching the screen you should be feeling that right all right let's go on to number two Okay. Um, my fiance, Evastina, and I were walking towards um, the main street downtown, or just the downtown area, where the Constitution Day festivities were taking place. And uh, on the way, we passed a lady with a young boy. And in Norwegian, um, just after we had passed them, he... Uh, he got our attention and he he asked us if we were going to see some specific part i think he was asking about the the military corps doing their 
their rifle display. I don't really have the, the word for this, but they, they, um, they swing their guns around and they do this marching and, um, <clears throat> and he was asking us if we were going downtown to see that. And, uh, and then he told us that, uh, it had already passed and <laughs> we were too late. And um, I didn't understand any of this because my Norwegian is not good enough, but Evestina can speak Norwegian. So they had this little exchange. And then I asked her um, <clears throat> what the boy had said. And um, she was telling me as she was saying the word sorry, uh, sorry. <laughs> Right, the moment prior to the beep, she was saying the word sorry because she was describing the kid saying, sorry, you missed it. And, um, <clears throat> and at the moment, I was, I was really curious about, about their exchange. And even though we were walking, I wasn't, um, I wasn't paying attention to um, – I, I was completely listening to what she was saying. And I, I was not paying attention to anything visual that kind of struck me because usually when you're walking, you're looking at where you're going um, <clears throat> or you're trying to avoid obstacles or, or whatever. But I was, I was very into what she was saying at the moment and she was saying the word sorry. And, and so does that mean that at this particular beep, you were particularly interested in the word sorry or does it mean like, I was interested in what she was saying, and at the moment of the beep, the beep happened to get the word sorry. That's a good question. That is a good question. Um, she was saying it in kind of a long, drawn-out way, like, sorry. And um, <clears throat> so I guess I was kind of focused on the word as well as the greater context. Um, yeah, so I was kind of focused on the, on the word. And, Sorry. and so now I've got sort of the same refining question as, as that. So were you attending to the vocal characteristics of the sorry? No. Or, or, or was it just that that word attracted you sort of out of the, stream of the rest of the word the, the way she was saying it it sort of drew my my attention and um yeah it was just, uh oh it's hard to describe <laughs> now that i think about it i don't want to think about i feel like i don't want to think about it too much because then i might bias myself in some way but um she was saying the word sorry and i i was listening I, See, it's unfortunate because I can't put it in the sentence that she was saying because I don't remember what that sentence was. But, um, but I had figured that the kid said something like that because it seemed like he was describing something that we that that we had missed, and um, <clears throat> and he was telling us that he was trying to help us out and give us some information that this event had already passed. Um, and is that somehow present to you, or is that the context of the sentence that you're hearing? That was, um, that was the context of the sentence that I was hearing, but I was sort of expecting that that's what the kid was saying. So when Evestina said the word sorry, I, I kind of wasn't surprised. And, uh, and it was just sort of filling in my expectation of what the kid might have said. Okay. So, so on, a, on a sort of a meta note here, so what you said a minute ago, I'm, I'm worried I'm biased by what I'm thinking too hard about this. And, and you absolutely are, and that's the way this process is. And we understand that, so that, so that's that's why every every day is hopefully you'll become more efficient at it, and then mm -hmm. and then we, we won't have to spend too much as as much time making the same kinds of distinctions as we're making, mm -hmm. and and so there's less opportunity for biasing. 
and that's just the way this process works. There's no there's no shortcut for it. We have to learn how to talk to each other. You've got to learn what to say to us, and we've got to learn what to ask from you, and and that takes some some time and what I call the iterative process that we're going to get better at. Yeah. And 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 so it is the case that as every every question screws up the process. That's, that's just, just the way it is. Mm -hmm. Amber, you got questions? No questions. All right, let's go on to number three. Okay. Um, I'll just read what I had. I was on the street side watching the Constitution Day parade go by. Um, elementary school kids were in it representing their schools and their classes, their grades. Um, and then <clears throat> at the moment... Okay, so there was a, there was a um, a girl. She was maybe eleven or so, and she was approaching me. And she looked she looked at me. She looked at me in the eyes, and I and I looked at her looking at me. And after a moment, I looked away and began thinking to myself, "Awkward." And <clears throat> as the word went through my head, I began to think that I should have smiled or, or waved at her because it might have seemed like I was staring. And um, the, at the moment prior to the beep, the word awkward, and it was, it was more, more like awkward. It was more, um, it was long and drawn out in the manner sometimes portrayed in, in movies or TV shows, I believe. And um, <clears throat> I had come to this conclusion about, oh, maybe I should have smiled or, or waved while, while the word awkward was sort of playing in my head. I was, I was sort of hearing myself saying awkward, and that's, that's, okay. that's what I have. Okay. And so let's start with the word. So the word awkward, awkward is present to me. and And... Is there more to say about how that word is present? Um, I was, I was sort of half innerly speaking it and half innerly hearing it. At this, it was just sort of automatic, and um, <clears throat> and it was long and drawn out. And I feel like simultaneously, maybe. Mm, no, I think it was with, I don't know if it was with words or without words, but I remember at the same sort of instant, I was thinking, oh, I should have smiled or waved or something so that it wouldn't have been, because I, I felt like maybe it was a bit awkward. Okay. And and so the, let's, let's stick with the word awkward for a minute. So you said you're sort of half speaking it and half hearing it. Does that mean like two separate processes? I speak it and I hear it, or does it seem like one thing that I'm doing that has both a speaky and a heary kind of a thing? Yeah. Um, it happens to me in other occasions just that are awkward, and just the, the word awkward just sort of came to me. It's hard to describe. I wasn't. It wasn't like I was innerly speaking or trying to reason something out. It just sort of, it felt like it just sort of popped in my head, but it was me saying awkward. In your voice? In my voice, yes. And in the manner of speaking, so it's, I, I feel myself to be speaking awkward as opposed to hearing it coming out of a tape recorder or something like that? Yeah, I guess so. I, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, it was more me speaking the word awkward. Okay. And and I'm gathering that this is one word. It's not a word in a sentence. It's not like that was an awkward situation or something like that. And the beep happens. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So this is a one word commentary that that I speak yeah. to myself for what yeah. I, I, I it was it was almost like I started speaking the word awkward, but then it just sort of became longer and more drawn out as, and as a, and then it's almost 
turned into hearing it. And as I was hearing it, I was thinking, oh, I should have smiled or waved. And then it wouldn't have. And, and I, was, I was thinking that because there were many more um, kids and people in the parade that were coming by. And I was like, you know, don't, don't stare at them. Wave to them or smile to them. And is the word is the word smile or wave present at this moment, or or is that just a? I un understand that that's what I'm thinking. I'm not not using any words to think it. Yeah, I think the word smile. I think it was sort of like a, a notion all at once. Like I should have I should have smiled or I should wave. And it was just sort of this this notion. It was maybe it was, felt like inner speaking, but it was just the the whole thought sort of came to me without drawing it out into those individual words. I should have waved or smiled. So let's let's presume that it's possible. Not saying that this is what happened, but it, that it's possible to have a thought such as I should have smiled or waved with words or without words, either one. I think it's possible mm -hmm. to have that thought without words. I'm not saying you did here, it's our first sampling day, we're not, but I wanna notice at least the possibility that it would be possible to think, I should have smiled or waved and have that be carried with words or have that be without words. Mm -hmm. I don't know, I, now, I'm, now I'm almost starting to doubt myself because I do remember I do remember having the word smile or smiled come to my, or, yeah. And, and I think, I think, I think I can put it this way. The word smiled sort of represented the whole notion of I should have smiled or waved, I think. So I that think that, that makes the most sense to me. So I think that makes sense. And I think, but I also think that that we may very well have muddied the waters substantially about this sample, mm -hmm. and, and so I I think there's reason to reason to be skeptical about that, and there's reason to believe it. It's plausible, and whether it's true or not, I don't actually know. Mm -hmm. And 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 that is not a criticism of Phil. That is the way, and not a criticism of me for asking the questions that I ask. It's it's the way this process works. Mm -hmm. To the to the, if if we have to let's put it this way, if we have to sort of spell out the possibility that maybe there are words and maybe there are not words, then I think it's not possible to know retrospectively whether there were words or not words. Mm, okay. Going forwards, it's a different deal because now we've had this discussion at least once about well maybe there's words maybe there's not, and mm -hmm. and Phil will be more alert to that presumably, because we've had this mm -hmm. conversation, or maybe not, maybe this, this conversation will flow in one ear and out the other or whatever, and that's, that's fine too, but, the, but that's the way this process works. And if, okay. if we have to work at making a distinction, it's too late for that distinction to, to be uh, reliably reported. Okay. You, you, have, you have got to have that distinction ready in mm -hmm. the second right after the beep. Mm -hmm. And if you didn't, then the, I think there's just no way of knowing what was going on at the moment of the beep. Yeah. And that's, and that is just the way this process works. That is the, yeah. I'll, I'll try to be more attentive to that. Yeah. And, and, and what I, what I would also say about that is I don't want you to be particularly attentive to that distinction because that is not necessarily the most important distinction. That happens to be the one that we talked about on the third beep today. And maybe that was a figment of Russ's imagination or, or Phil and Russ got into some kind of a wild hair or whatever. And, and so what, what, I, what I expect will happen is that we will get better at paying attention to what Phil's experience was. And we don't have to work at it any, any, any more than we, if we're interested in it, which it seems to me we are then we'll get better at it just in the, in, the, in the course of a natural thing. And we don't have to specify what we're going to get better at it. You know, it could very well be that there won't be any more words ever again in your experience. And, 
and so this distinction will will not make any sense to us. That would be fine with me. Okay, you so you're talking about the distinction, and now I'm I'm aware of it, and I'm yeah I'm not going to try to focus on it in particular. Is is what you're saying? I, I, think. I think that's exactly right. Yeah. Okay. So so for example, we and we made a distinction in a previous week about the about uh, touch the touch could be there, could not be there. Mm -hmm. well, that that gets filed away into the distinctions that now that now are part of our conversation. Right. And and but I don't want you to be going to say, oh, well, was, was touch there? Touch not there? Or words there? Words not there? That's not the deal. The, the deal is let's try to grasp Phil's experience, and and we have some practice in talking about touch, talking about color, and talking about brightness, and talking about words, and talking about context, and all those yeah. things. And uh, we're going to get better at it, or we're not. I think I think we will. I, I'm guessing that we will, but but I don't. Even that, I don't want to say. Well, we are going to get better at it because maybe we're not. You know, there's the world's a complicated place. Mm -hmm. Okay, Amber, you want to ask anything there before we run to number four? Um, I think I'm good. All right, let's do number four. Okay, I was on. Um, there's a pedestrian section of the main street i was on i was on that part of the main street surrounded by people celebrating uh constitution constitution day in um many people wear traditional outfits they're very they're very nice and um it's actually a very formal occasion um <clears throat> i wanted to send my family some pictures and a few minutes prior, I had seen an, an older man wearing a, a very extravagant, um, so these traditional outfits are called bunad. He was wearing a very extravagant bunad. And, um, and I, regret, I regretted not asking him if I could take his picture. And at the moment prior to the beep, I was thinking to myself that I could have just said to him, can I take a picture of your wonderful bunad? And, and it probably would have been fine. And the context there is that I have this vague memory of reading something, maybe a comment on Facebook or, or something about locals not liking tourists taking their photo. I mean, I'm not really a tourist because I've lived here for over four years, but um, <clears throat> they might think that I am. But I was, I was thinking to myself, it, it would have been just fine if, if I had approached the man and said enthusiastically, could I take a picture of your wonderful bonad? And that's that's the th that's what was going through my head at the moment prior to the beep. Okay. So that's a complicated phrase. Can I take a picture of your wonderful bonad? Was that whole phrase there, or just the idea of that without any? The whole phrase was there. In what way? I was I was. As I remember it, I was innerly speaking to myself. Um, I should have just said, can I take a picture of your wonderful bonad? So I'm speaking that whole sentence, quote, I should have just said, quote, can I take a picture of your wonderful bonad, unquote, question mark, basically. Um, the way that I have it here, I was, I just said, can I take a a picture of your wonderful bonad. Yeah. So the I should have just said is the, sort of the context of the of the deal. Yeah. That's the context. Okay. Yeah. And so at the moment of the beep my experience is of innerly saying as if to this older fellow, can I take a picture of your wonderful bonad? Yeah. And this is in my voice. Yeah. I, as if I'm speaking in it, it like you're referring to me and yeah. my yeah yeah and yeah. and and and, we're, and as an aside i sometimes switch back and forth with pronouns like i'll, I'll use i when i mean you and i think most of the time that's but basically i'm trying to understand what you're like and it's easier for me to do that if i yeah sure yeah first person but the so yeah, what i, I, I want to know is 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 this speaking 
does this speaking feel to me as in you mm -hmm. to feel like external speaking except that there's no words coming out correct so this is a this this is me speaking to myself well that's actually well let me ask that so is this me speaking to myself or me speaking to the guy do you feel like i'm speaking to the guy i or does it seem like like, I, like i'm speaking to the guy like i'm speaking to the guy i was sort of just imagining myself like because i i regretted not taking his picture and i was sort of imagining myself back in time a few minutes ago when I had first seen him and in saying to him, can I take a picture of your wonderful bonad? Okay. And is there anything else in your experience about this? At the, I shouldn't say about this. Is there anything else in your experience at the moment? For you? No, it was in, it was in the context of me saying that to him, but I wasn't, um, I, I wasn't really visualizing him. No, it was more, I was more focused on the, on the words that I regretted not saying to him. And how about the regret? Is that part of your experience? Um, the, whole thing, the whole context is regret. I understand that, but do I feel regretful at this moment? Yeah, I, I felt regretful, but I don't think it was an immediate part of the uh, context of this experience. It was more in the background, and I was just focused on, on having not said these words. Okay. Hey. Hey. So because I might have to write something down here. How does one spell bonad? Oh, yeah. Um, I had to look that up as well. It's B-U-N-A-D. B-U-N-A-D. Yeah, bonad. Bonad, okay. And while I'm into spelling, your fiancé's name is Evastina, did you say? Yeah, it's um, E-V-A, and then a hyphen, and then S-T-I-N-A. That's how I had it, except for the no item. So. Good job. Okay. I think I'm good. You're good, Amber? Good. Okay. And number five. Number five. Okay. What happened at number five? That was today. I had just finished reading the sentence, quote, unquote, the term retroactive avoidance refers to a special class of effects of future stimulus presentations on past behavioral responses, quote. I didn't understand it. I didn't understand the sentence. And I was thinking, um, I'm going to have to read that one again as I was scanning with my eyes back to the beginning of the sentence to give it another try. Um, <clears throat> the sentence is the, the first sentence of an abstract in, um, in, a, in an article of an article in, in Pose One for a replication study about a um, strange phenomenon that some believers count as evidence towards the existence of the paranormal. And without saying it, I was also thinking something like, oh, God, here we go. And while not really thinking it, but feeling that sort of attitude, um, it was kind of like I was innerly rolling my eyes. So I take it that there are something like three aspects of your experience going on at the moment uh, I had just finished reading okay I had just finished reading the sentence and I didn't I didn't I didn't pick it up I, I, I didn't give it enough attention I guess and uh, and I, I, yeah so I didn't understand it and I was thinking yeah I'm gonna to have to read that one again 
And is that and I was quote? scanning back to it? And as I was scanning back to it, I had I had an attitude of, oh, here's like, here's something about this paranormal. I like I'm not a believer in the paranormal, and uh, and any this idea of retroactive avoidance as as some sort of psychic phenomenon, um, I I personally think is kind of silly, and. It seems like this article got into that right away with the first sentence. And um, I didn't understand the first sentence. I was scrolling back to the beginning, but it was, and I was thinking, I'm going to have to read that one again. I think I used words, I believe, as I remember it. I used words, I'm going to have to read that one again. And then as I was scrolling back with my eyes, back to the beginning of the sentence on the screen, it was kind of like I was actually doing an eye roll of, oh, geez. So it seems like there's sort of two things going on. There's one is that I'm somehow conveying the words. I'm going to have to read that one again, unquote. Mm-hmm. And I'm scanning back with a attitude of, oh, God, this paranormal crap again. Yeah, and, and that is accompanied by, or part of that, part of that is an eye, inner eye roll. Yeah, it, okay. it felt like that. It felt like that. So does it, and when and when we talk about an eye roll, do you really do? You, does it feel like I'm rolling my eyes, or or are you saying I have the feeling that if I were to embody it, I would roll my eyes? Yeah. Um. It felt like I, I wasn't actually rolling my eyes, but it was, as you sort of said, here we go with this crap. Um, I felt like I was doing an eye roll. Okay. Yeah. And, and, and so how does that feeling present itself? Not physically. So not in my in terms eye. of. Yeah, not physically. I didn't actually feel like I was rolling my eyes, but just in my in my attitude. So it's sort of a mental eye roll, a mental. Yeah, a mental eye roll. Yeah, a mental here. Here we go again. Paranormal yeah. crap eye roll. Yeah, but no physical reaction to it. No eye roll. No, no. sigh. No. No, I was. Um, I what occupied a good a, the probably the greater part of my attention was me saying I'm going to have to read that one again and and are you saying that is this an innerly spoken thing I am speaking these words to myself I'm going to have to read that one again unquote yeah very very quickly like I'm going to have to read that one again so it's not just the idea I'm going to have to read that one again. It's the words, quote, I'm going to have to read that one again, unquote. Yeah, but in, in, kind, of a, in kind of a condensed manner. It's, it's hard to, you know, it's hard to describe. It just, I feel like it happened so quickly. I, I read the sentence. I didn't understand it. And, and I thought to myself, I'm going to have to read that one again. But... It was like all those words might have sort of might have been joined together, and um, and I remember looking back on the on the screen to the beginning of the sentence, and also having this attitude of, oh boy, here we go. So let's have another little lecture about about what what the way this this could be. So it could be that you are experiencing those words one after another, just as if I were saying them out loud, uh, I'm going to have to read that one again, unquote, that whole string of words. Or it could be that there is some condensation about that, as you use the term, but the, hmm. the literature is, uh, is, as you no doubt know, talks about condensed inner speech. And hmm. that, that, inner, that condensation could be, you know, it could be, all I, all I say was again, and I know that that word, I, I know that what again means is I'm going to have to read that one again because it's me that's doing the speaking. And so, so when I say again, I know what that means. So, so that's possible. 
and it could yeah. be that there's one word and it could be there's you know read again that those two words are present and i don't i when i i want us to be open about that so condensation could take place or mm -hmm. or not and it is possible for that idea to be present without any words at all so just sort of the maximal condensation why mm -hmm. I can I can think that thought with no words at all because I'm doing the thinking and I don't have to I don't have to use words if I don't want to and I I know what I'm thinking. Or it could be that I'm going back to do it again. My eyes are tracking back, and I don't have any really cog cognition experience of anything cognitive, thinky, wordy, whatever. I don't have any experience in that, <coughs> but I can say. Well, the way my eyes are going back in, incorporates or embodies this idea that I have to read that one again. All those things are possible, and and I and on the first day, I don't ever expect anybody to get any of those things right. I mean, it takes practice to tease those possibilities apart, mm -hmm. and I don't I don't want to presuppose that I know which of those Phil engages in. And it could be that I have, that I've missed an important one for Phil. I don't want to imply that these are the four possibilities and that has to be one of those multiple choice. Mm -hmm. That's kind of a deal. It's not that. What I, it was, it was the way that I remember it. And I don't know if this makes sense, but um, it was, it was almost like I innerly mumbled Oh, I'm going to have to read this one again. Just not really sounding out the words in my head, but not really being completely silent. Well, for lack of a better term, um, kind of like an inner, inner, oh, I'm going to have to read this one again. Well, that there's, so there's option number five. I listed four or whatever, and that's option number five. And, 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 and what I, what I think is that the water is muddy. The water, if now that we've had this conversation, the next time you have that beef, you're you're more likely to be able to pay pay better attention to the way that experience actually took place. Yeah, maybe, yeah. Maybe, mm -hmm. not, yeah. So maybe there's some sixth option that that won't have been improved or might have even been made worse by this conversation. Mm -hmm. But I the the best we can do from my point of view is to is to try to do the best we can do each time and in, in the hopes that, that we get better at it as we go. Mm -hmm. okay. So I would, I, so I, what, what I'm saying is I'm not really crediting your claim that what, that this was a mumble. Maybe it was, maybe it wasn't. I okay. think, I think our questioning has screwed up your ability to answer that question adequately. And mm -hmm. that's not a criticism of Phil. Mm -hmm. it, it's just a, a matter of fact. This is the way this, the way being careful about describing it really is becoming apparent how these biases and presuppositions can play a huge role in in this totally yeah and so and and so i i think i think it's fair to say that probably every word that i have said is aimed at undermining the possibility of some presupposition or other mm -hmm. and with the with the hope that if we can set those presuppositions aside then the experience uh, on some future day will will stand free of the presupposition mm -hmm. yep. and it's and it's a skill it's practice we, we have to we, you know everybody's got their favorite presuppositions and and we don't get rid of them on one day we don't wake up one day and say well i think i'll have no presupp presuppositions mm -hmm. today any more than i wake up today and say i think i'll be a virtuoso violinist today <laughs> so you gotta work at it all right that was number five should we go to number six okay this was the last one i was about to search my emails for a message a specific message with uh, like a draft with a link to a vietnamese recipe that that uh that we have planned for dinner tonight um at the moment prior to the beep i was about to type the name of the dish which is, it's called Goi Ga. And I was about to type the name of the dish in the search field, but I couldn't remember it. 
And often when I try to recall the name of someone or something that I can't remember, I start by pretending to say it, but actually saying nonsense, like blah, blah, over and over again. And I, I sort of gradually shape what I say into the, into the right number of syllables or a familiar letter or syllable, hoping that um, if, if I'm right with maybe the first letter, the rest will come to me. And <clears throat> this time I did a, a mental blah without actually inner speaking the word blah or any nonsense word. It's more like the sentiment was there, like I was expelling some random syllable to start the process. And simultaneously, or maybe, maybe an instant later, I automatically visualized vaguely the, this, this is a salad dish. I visualized the, the dish, which looks especially and uniquely colorful with, um, it has shredded chicken and purple cabbage. So when you look at the dish, you see kind of purple and, and white. And um, so I, I was about to type the word. I, um, <clears throat> I couldn't remember the word, and I just had this this um, inner blah, hoping that I it would come to mind. Meanwhile, I was um, I was visualizing the the colors of the dish, like little bits of purple and little bits of 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 white, to sort of help me remember the name of it. And is all that happening right at the very leading edge of the? Leading edge of the caught in, caught in flight by the beep. Yeah. So I'm some, somehow saying blah and somehow visualizing color, the color of purple and white. Yeah. Okay. And That's is exactly one right. one of those more more salient to you than the other? The the colors or the blah. I think. I think they were equally salient. Fifty-ish, fifty-ish. So let's start with the let's start with the salad. So I'm innerly seeing this salad, but I'm mostly attending to the purple and the white. Is that right? Yeah, I, it was only purple and white that I I didn't really see the salad. I just saw bits of purple and bits of bits of white. Okay, so this is a this is a. Purple, uh, the experience of seeing purple and white as so a as a representation of the salad. So is my experience of seeing the salad or of seeing the purple and the white, which, mm. I, know, which I know to be the salad. Uh, it was an experience of seeing purple and white as a representation of the salad. So representation is a complicated word. So, um, I can I can imagine the salad in a lot of detail if I want to, but in my memory of it, what stands out are the colors purple and white and little sort of little blotches like um maybe if you took a picture of the salads and then put it out of focus and or sort of distorted it and just reduced the colors to the main two colors um maybe that's kind of similar to what i was envisioning so in, in my experience the color the colors are the prominent portion of this thing it's not so much that i'm seeing a that I'm seeing a salad. It's that I'm seeing the colors purple and white. Yeah, I'm not looking. But, I'm not seeing cabbage, and I'm not seeing chicken. I'm just seeing little bits of purple and little bits of white. But I also rep I also understand that the the purple is somehow a cabbagey purple, I guess, and the white yeah. somehow a chickeny white. But that's yeah, exactly. But my but my interest is in the purpleness, purpleness and the whiteness. Correct. Okay. Yeah. And at the same time, I am somehow blind. Yeah. I just. It's it's almost as if I was 
as if I said out loud, uh, I, like I was thinking, oh, damn, what is that? What is that salad called? What is the, the Vietnamese? What is the proper name for that salad? It's this. <laughs> but I was doing that mentally. And is and so is that an innerly spoken or No, no. It it was just I it was just the sensation of having made some random sound to get me started on trying to remember the name. I don't know. Maybe that doesn't make sense. Well, uh, everything makes sense and nothing makes sense. You know, <laughs> yeah. We're trying to we're trying to get at complicated things here. So. Is, is this blah thing, or whatever it is, it, is that present in the form of speaking, in the experience of speaking, or present in the form of some kind of a cognitive space holder that doesn't have any speaking? No, it was, it's present in the space of speaking. So this is in the manner of innerly speaking blah. Yeah, but I wouldn't say it was the word blah. It was just like a noise. Making a noise, yeah. And yeah. is there is there actually a noise or is that is it even less re, even less explicit than that? Less explicit than that. So I can't see I I can't I can't describe the I I'm saying that I had um a feeling or a sort of like a sensation similar to making a noise like blah, but it wasn't the word blah and it wasn't an actual noise that I can describe. So what, what I've got so far is that there's something about this which seems spoken. Yeah, and what what I understand that to mean is that it's in somewhat of the same realm as awkward was spoken. No, awkward was a lot more clear. That was definitely the word awkward. Right. So I understand. I understand that one was clearly clearly articulated. Yeah. But what I was trying to get at was that was spoken clearly articulated. And this one, I understand that we're saying it was spoken, but at the other extreme of articulation. Correct. So it's yeah. not, it's not just that I'm waiting for a word to appear. It's that I am speaking a totally unarticulated token. Yep. Yep. Um, I do this, I do this kind of regularly when I can't remember the, the word that I'm trying to think of. And, um, <clears throat> I usually start with just a, a guess of the first letter or how many syllables there are in the word. And I just, I had this experience like, like I had done that without actually doing it. And then at the same time, or perhaps an instant later, I was visualizing purple and white, sort of in a vague manner of the salad, looking at the salad. So that there's we've got another distinction to be making here. So the, I have the feeling that I had done that Yep. That's sort of a, that would be a recollection of a speaking rather than a speaking itself. So I can recall myself as having said something like blah, but at the moment of the beep, I'm not really saying anything. Uh, I think I'm getting confused now. So it comes down to the temporal specificity. So the, the moment that we're looking for is this, this moment, right? one microsecond just before the beat, beat begins. Yeah. And the distinction that I'm chasing at the moment is something like, was I saying blah without actually articulating blah, but was, was I in the act of saying? That's one possibility. 
And yep. another possibility is I'm recalling that slightly before that I had engaged in this inner, inner speaking of blah. No, I think I think the former is is the correct okay. experience. Is or, or a more accurate description of, of what my experience was. So I'm I am innerly speaking something which wasn't going to be a word in the in the first place, but it's even less than not a word. It's I'm I'm innerly speaking Just a vocal a of, hint of a word or something. A feeling similar to a vocal expulsion just to start the process of trying to remember this word. Okay. A sound. Yeah. I think I'm good. Yeah. And I think we've done a good job. This is a pretty typical, good, high quality, I would say, first day of, of sampling. Good. But we've done, and so the goal, the goal, the goal of all day, all days of sampling is, as you said a minute ago, bracketing every suppositions. I think we've we've done that. We've tried to make some some distinctions that seem like they might be important. Maybe they are. Maybe they're not. We'll find out. Mm -hmm. uh, we've taken each other seriously without without believing each other. I mean, I think I think that's that's part of the part of the the goal the goal here is to suspend belief until there's no reason to suspend belief anymore so. yeah sometimes i even had trouble believing myself <laughs> yeah so you say you know that i i very frequently do this kind of thing and i said well, maybe he does maybe he doesn't that's well if it, if he does then maybe we'll see some more beats like this and we'll find out about that and that's the that is the what i would take to be the sort of the genuine effort to, that we're trying to make here. And so we're, we're, we're not interested really in Phil's experience in general. We're interested in Phil's experience at the random moments that we get to, we get to see. And, and I think we've done a pretty good job of sort of corralling our interests into. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm quite pleased. I think this, this, this is, this is turning, this is a great experience in, in, in and of itself. Yeah, I agree with that. So shall we do it again? Yes. Um, when is a good question. Um, I'll send you a calendar invite. And, uh, okay, that's great. Anything more that we should be saying today? I don't think so. I, I'm, I'm a bit more attentive to these distinctions, like was I actually using words or, or not? I think that's the main distinction um, I'm going to be more aware of, but not overly focused on. Um, Otherwise, I think I'll just keep doing the same thing and, and just try to improve and be as specific as I can. I think, I think that's the deal. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. Thank okay. You. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of the day. It was nice meeting you, Amber. And, um, yeah. and I'll see you guys again soon. See you Monday. All right. Take care. Bye-bye.